up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Nina. And who used to wear the previously petty procrastination crown? Yours truly. I, I sure did. Yes, I did. Back in the day, I had a lot of issues with productivity, procrastinating, having a lack of mental focus and motivation, as well as feeling like a failure and not learning from my failures. In fact, my first year of college, that second semester, I had a 0.89 GPA. Say it with me, 0.89. Does that even exist? Yeah. But I sit before you, Dr. Nina, today. So it is possible to get all of that back on track and get your head straight in the game. Look, a lot of times we psych ourselves out. We don't give ourselves the chance to feel success. We don't build the right systems. We don't create the right environment for success, but we can get there. And some of the main things I know that I struggle with that you should click like if you can relate to are these. Excess decision-making of my own and making extra decisions for other people. Having a whole lot of clutter all around. Not a lot of organization, lying, and over committing to things and people when you know you don't have the time. Procrastination and avoiding the responsibilities that you do have that are priorities or should be priorities. Perfectionistic behaviors. And can we get a drum roll for the last one? <laughs> Lack of sleep. But there are ways that we can beat this and come out on top. And they are realistic and can be invited into our everyday lives. You don't have to look big, you can start small, and you can be successful. All the resources that I discuss and everything that I have is down below in the description box. Also, I wanna hear from you. Let me know some of the things that you're using for mental clarity these days. The things that are helping you with productivity, getting motivation, and also getting it together when it comes to your day to day so that you can be set up for success and work for it along the way. Also, don't forget to text me and say, hey, Dr. Nina and my free text community. What's that all about? It's absolutely free of charge. It just keeps you in the know as to when I have those master classes, other events, as well as my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Amazon. Amazon lives and also any things that I'm offering. Also join me on drninaellishervey.com for my free eight day supernatural video program, which is all about the things that help to motivate you in your day to day and help you to be your best while thriving. All right, y'all let's get into this video and don't forget to like this video. Look, it's absolutely free of charge. It gets me into that algorithm and it makes sure that you see my face. <laughs> when you're wanting to see what's new and what I have up. I know a lot of you all are missing some of my notifications. That's the way to get them. It costs you nothing, so click that like button. So one of the number one things that I had to do and get in order, even when I was experiencing major failures in life and when I felt like a failure, was being realistic. Being realistic saved me so much headspace, knowing what I was capable of doing and when I could do it. A lot of times we overextend ourselves. I love to use fitness as an example because I feel like it can be compared to almost anything. Instead of saying, you know what, I'm gonna start with two to five pounds and see how I can lose that. Okay, I'm gonna stay consistent with a workout, I'm gonna drink my water, I'm gonna cut back on some of the foods I know I shouldn't have. I'm just gonna start slow. We like, yeah, I'm gonna lose 100 pounds in two months. No, you're not giving yourself the chance to even be realistic. Sometimes we psych ourselves out because we have not created goals that make sense. And on top of that, we haven't chunked those goals. In order to get to where you want to go, right? You write down a major goal, okay? And I've shown you all my goal sheets that I use for my mentorship membership, which you can check out on my website. I love my mentees. Hey, how y'all doing? Um, but what I do is I suggest writing a major goal and then breaking that goal down into small parts. That helps you to know what you have, what you have available to you, the resources you can use, and what willpower you have to even get there and realign yourself if you don't have those things available to you because that's okay that's what you're working on we're not trying to excel in outer space okay we're trying to be here be realistic and get to what we want 
It's also quite important to change the way we use our energy. I keep the items I use most often around me and visible. The reason why is because it makes it feel natural for me to slip into my habits and my daily routines. I'm not looking for everything all the time. I told you all before, I like to lay out my gym clothes. I like to have my car keys out, different things that remind me of what needs to happen throughout the day. So I'm already preparing my mind, right? So my mental is already there. But also when I wake up and I'm trying to get ready, I'm not having to look for everything. And this is also how I'm able to take better care of myself. And I'm not just talking self care, but I'm just talking about regular care of self daily. I keep items that are familiar out and in my face so that I have no excuses for not performing the things that are necessary for myself every day. This includes face items for washing and for care, body care items like deodorant, body wash, and even perfumes, items for overall grooming and care, and even items I use for cleaning daily. This also keeps me aware of the products that I use the most. I'm not saying have everything out, but the most important things out, like your to-do book that I love, I told you all all about it, or the things that you reach for, like your journal or the book that you're reading. They just remind you in your day and serve as a mental indication of something that not only should you be doing, but you might need to do for yourself. I am able to commit to not double buying things, I am notorious for getting home and having had bought something I already have and who likes doing that? And speaking of some of those great items that I absolutely love that I include in my day, I love Native Deodorant and they are today's video sponsor. Now y'all know I love Native for their products because I've shared them for so many years. They not only help me to smell great, but they give me great options. They've also helped me to switch to plastic free packaging for some of their products. They released a plastic free version of their native deodorants. It's made from paperboard and native is committed to sourcing from responsibly managed forests. It's the same formula with more sustainable packaging. Native is a proud partner of 1% of the planet. They commit 1% of plastic free deodorant sales to environmental nonprofits. And y'all, all of their scents smell so fresh and so clean. I personally love the lavender and rose and eucalyptus and mint. For me, it's still not sticky. It dries so quickly and also it goes on so well and it keeps me fresh even during my exercise routine. It's aluminum free, paraben free, vegan and also cruelty free. Three plastic free deodorants are normally $39, but if you use my link and my code babydoll11, you'll get them for $29. Now that's 25% off. It is so important to work on those patterns of self-sabotage. Let me tell you, so many times we don't see it and we'll blame the world for every other problem that we have. But I can guarantee you a lot of times when we look into our bag of things that we've done, we oftentimes are standing there as the person who is dealing the bad hand and the bad cards. Now, I'm not saying it's not somebody else's fault, the things that have happened to you. I am saying though, that we have to learn the role that we play in certain situations and clean those things up, right? We procrastinate because sometimes we don't want to experience failure. So we don't want to experience anything with the probability of failure. We also hold ourselves back from new opportunities because we're afraid to soar. We're afraid of success. We're also afraid of the new things we might open ourselves up to. Furthermore, we move back from being able to become more self-aware. We don't go to therapy. We don't take care of our mental health so that we cannot figure out the issues that we might have that are underlying our levels of difficulty. When we do this, we call self-sabotage. We're not giving back to ourselves willfully and we're not giving ourselves the chance to achieve. So what I suggest doing is writing down those things that you feel are holding you back, holding you back from getting to the ultimate goals that you've carved out for yourself. The things you know you should have, could have, would have done by now, whether it be fitness, whether it be that new career, whether, whether it be those new networks, um, talking to your mom about issues that you have with your childhood, talking to your dad about issues you've had with your childhood, all of those various different things, confronting your spiritual reality, looking at your space and see who you're letting in it, the friendships that you know should no longer be and the friendships you know you should be nurturing. What are the things that are holding you back? You can't really move forward if you're holding your own collar 
and pulling your own self back. Y'all, batch tasking saved my life. Now, what the heck is that? Batch tasking is the ability to take things and group them and accomplish them in a way that makes your time more efficient and your goals more realistic. So going back to that realistic thing. So for instance, an example or some examples would be like buying things you use the most in bulk. A commodity nowadays is tissue paper, but you know you gotta use it. So I like to buy it in bulk. Why? Because it saves me time and it saves me money. How does it save me time? If I buy it in bulk, I know I have enough in the house that I don't have to keep running back and forth to the store, wasting my time, losing mental clarity, focus, and motivation, right? It's going to affect you to have to do that all the time. It saves me money because I'm saving per roll. I'm getting a little bit more bang for my buck. I'm getting a bit more rolls than having to run back and forth to the store, which is costing me gas money too. Also, I like to pay most of my bills at the same time. So I like to make sure that all my bills are paid at the beginning of the month, day one, right? So that way I'm able to allot money to my savings, but also to my ties, because I do pay my ties, and then also to any other bills and things that need to be handled. That means for the rest of the month, I don't have to worry about it. I'm all done, I'm squared away, any extra savings I want to make, I can, and I also know what I can have fun with. And then I also like to handle smaller tasks at much the same time so that it increases increases my effort and it increases my energy levels. So those small things that we can do, like putting the dishes away daily, also washing the clothes, cleaning up behind ourselves. Those are small things that when they build up, they cost a lot more energy expended and we need all the energy we can get. So when you batch task, you're able to take things, put them in groups, get them done and rest assured that you don't have to worry about them getting done in the future. Another thing I had to learn was staying organized and clutter free. I mentioned this a lot, but this has a lot to do with the reflection of how we feel about ourselves. Your space right now, look around it. Okay, when my mind is all over the place, my space tends to mimic that. So it tends to be a lot of stuff in disarray, things all over the floor or whatever you have. And this is why I try to keep peace. I try to keep peace in my home. I try to keep peace with the things around me and I try to clean by the day. Not just because I wanna say my house is clean, right? I just don't like the rush and the hustle and bustle behind trying to clean when I think it's necessary. I deserve to have a clean home daily. And not only that, I also invest in making sure that someone helps to clean at least once a month because I want to make sure that my space is completely cleansed of various things that are there. It's important to keep your mental clutter together just as much as your home clutter. And all you have to do is create small spaces where things go and reside. I have special spaces for all the products that I have. I have drawers, I have containers. I've also learned how to pick and choose what I need to give away, what needs to stay. I go to Goodwill often because a lot of times clutter can build up. I'm not a minimalist just yet, but I do try to make sure that I do remove things from my home that could be holding me down. And a lot of times that mental baggage that we have about the way that our home space looks, we take that out into the world. Believe it or not, try, just think about it. Have you ever gone somewhere and known that your house was a mess? What do you end up doing? You keep thinking, man, I need to clean up. Man, I need to clean up. You can't even enjoy a concert you are at or time with friends or family because you're thinking about how messy your home is. And that carries out when you get home if you don't find the time to be able to clean it because you feel guilty and you feel bad about your space. So that's why I like to keep that practice of cleansing my space almost daily in order for it to feel more like home and to get rid of the mental clutter. The next thing is to learn how to cut down on worry. Look, I think there's so many things to worry about daily, but sometimes we even have to create barriers and boundaries around that. Look, I have my free boundaries ebook linked down below for you, for you to try out. The reason why I created that book is because I know so many people that carry on the world's weight, right? So if it's not us and we're having a smooth time, we're trying to figure out whose problems we can fix next. That's not always necessary. Sometimes we worry enough for ourselves and we need to cut down and be more stress-free with that through things like therapy, mentorship, 
coaching, all of those things can help with our mental space. But sometimes we choose to take on the problems of others and we also allow them to come into our space and bring that in. And the way to create those boundaries is to really be clear about the fact that you have needs, desires, and wants that you should take care of so that you can be even better for others that you choose to take care of. I think a lot of times that worry is not always our own. And I even watch who I bring into my home, speaking of homes, because some of their worry, their self-doubt, their mental, their complaints, their negativity can wear off on you and become your worries. So watch the company you keep, the type of people you're trying to to take care of and also what you're doing with your own mental space in order to keep some protection around your brain so that you're not always filtered into worrying about things that may not necessarily be your own. And if they are your own, things that you can directly create a plan to work on. The next thing is to take breaks often so that you can stay interested and motivated. Look, I am one of those people that can work all night long and do so many different things, but even I need a break. And I'm not just talking a vacation kind of break. You need to learn how to break up and even chunk down the things that you're working on. Some of you are in school. Some of you have various projects with work. Some of you all are stay-at-home moms, dads, or things like that. There's some times that you need a space for yourself, even if it's just five to 10 minutes to give yourself just some mental clarity, some ability to be able to think clearly and to also hear yourself. You know, it's easy for us to want to work hard all the time, but that's not always working smart. Take your time, figure out when you need breaks. Some of us can only work at max 30 minutes straight and then we need at least five to 10 to give us a little time off. Even if you're working at work, you should be able to have a little time to step away in order for you to regain your thought process. It's important, it's important that your mental space is together so that you are able to perform at your highest capacity. So maybe take some time, write down how you're spending your time. Even when you're doing a project, working on an assignment, doing something at work. See how much time you actually give yourself some mental space. And I'm not talking long bouts of periods of time. I'm just talking two to five minutes where you're able to give yourself a little time to just breathe, drink some water, maybe walk away from the same scene so that you're not seeing the same thing. Whatever it is, you have to give yourself some time so that you're interested and you're still motivated to show up. The next thing is meditation. Meditation is so important. Some of us pray, some of us sit and we just think, some of us just sit in a meditative state where we have our legs folded and we are literally just allowing ourselves to release. Some of us do yoga, but whatever it is that you do in meditation, allow yourself yet again, that space and opportunity to be quiet, to sit still, to maybe even not think of anything. For those of you that pray, also maybe include things like clarity, focus, your thought processes, keeping your mind clean and aware, but also allow it time to restore. It's just that time that you need in order to reinvigorate your mind and also give it a sense of comfort in a space that may be quite anxious, sometimes depressing, and not always very giving back to our mental state. Now, some of us are hard headed and we will never get around to self care. We think it's hogwash and it makes no sense. But let me tell you, there's research that shows that those that care for self have better and higher self esteem. They also look forward to doing things for themselves and they also learn how to build boundaries better than most, okay? So you have to actually schedule in that time for self care and don't go back on it. I talked about this in a recent video. Do things like creating those self care baskets, do something like have a three hour block or whatever time you have available, even if it's just 10 minutes where this is my time and I don't allow anyone to impede on my space or time. If you have to write it down, don't go back on it. When you do write it down, don't go back on it. Check in with yourself. Just like you work a job, 
work that self-care. Make sure you're giving back to yourself in many different ways. It doesn't have to be an elaborate day's facial or getting your nails done or things of that sort. Sometimes it's just sitting down and breathing. Sometimes it's having a quiet corner. Sometimes it's going for a walk. It's whatever you need it to be in order to get you to your next level. For some of us, that's our fitness, our daily care in giving back to our bodies and to our minds and our clarity. So think carefully about what self-care means to you, not define it by us YouTubers or anyone else. What gives back to you the most? Do that thing and don't go back on it. So I hope this video has been beneficial to you all. I know it can be so hard gaining that mental clarity, knowing which direction to go, how to get that mental focus back on par and stop procrastinating. I mean, huh, it's difficult, but we can do it. So make sure that you comment, share this video with someone who can use it. I mean, share it, okay? <laughs> comment and subscribe y'all make sure that you join me weekly as i've been posting your girl has been posting okay dr nina signing out beautiful brown baby dog peace check the links in the description for my free and new dr nina's mentorship facebook group which is a group of like-minded individuals looking to progress grow and support one another along the way the now that's life podcast is about to go into season two so i suggest you go ahead and subscribe to the podcast on all your major podcasting platforms all descriptions and links for that and my free supernatural video course are found below Thanks so much for all the love and support over on my new website. If you haven't already, go ahead and check it out and join me for new ways to interact with me, giveaways and prizes, weekly emails, as well as my free eight day supernatural video course, which is free when you sign up.